So we want to build a DeFi swap interface, okay? Yeah, it's no problem. Do you know how it works? Do you know how this DeFi swap interface works? Because if you don't know how a DeFi swap interface works, how are you gonna build one? So, anything that you desire, anything that you're willing to build in life, you cannot just build without knowing the logic behind it or else how you are going to even start building something if you don't know how, from an operation standpoint, works. How do you determine that? You research, you study, you research, you learn about a particular technology and then you start building based on the knowledge that you obtain. My idea in this video is to explain to you what is a DeFi swap interface? How does it work? What can we do with a DeFi swap interface? Swapping is the action to exchange something for something. You have a blue color pen and someone else has a red color pen and you want that red color pen in exchange for the blue pen. You need to find someone that is willing to take that blue pen and exchange for the red pen, the pen that you want. Let me explain to you why DeFi swap is way different from conventional trading. When we trade in a centralized exchange or in the stock market, we are exchanging values based on what the centralized exchange has to offer us. Let me explain. We have, let's say we want to buy Ethereum, right? We bought Ethereum in a centralized exchange. The centralized exchange will dictate the limit that is willing to pay for that token, okay? And usually that's determined by the amount of orders or better known as the order book. In the order book, we have every single order that the exchange has received and then the price execution of that order, which means that that was the price that I bought that asset. That was the price that I exchanged for. And let's take the example of Ethereum. We want to buy Ethereum and we want to exchange Ethereum for USDC. So if we do that in a centralized exchange, such as Binance Smart Chain, such as Coinbase, such as all the major crypto exchanges that we know of, Kraken, etc., we are going to exchange that based on the price that the exchange is willing to give. That is on a centralized exchange. However, when we are working with decentralized exchange, do you hear that? Do you hear decentralized? We're not talking about a centralized entity, in this case, a centralized exchange. We are talking with an infrastructure of liquidity pools, which is very different from a centralized exchange. In the DeFi swap ecosystem, we will exchange tokens or we will trade tokens using liquidity pools, which is quite different from a centralized exchange order books. In a liquidity pool, I need to have the collateral that I'm going to be paying in exchange for the token that you are intending to swap for. You see where I'm going? So let's say you have the same scenario. You have Ethereum, you wanna buy one Ethereum and you have USDC. So there must be in a decentralized exchange, there must be a liquidity pool with the equivalent in both assets. So then the price can be executed. So the exchange in the price of Ethereum, when the transaction is processed, is determined by the liquidity pool itself. The collateral that is available for me to pay you for that exchange, okay? So that is known as the automated market maker. So when we do this type of exchange, we are expecting to have a liquidity pool available to provide the collateral for that transaction. You see where I'm going? I have one USDC. How much ETH are you willing to give me 
for that one USDC. There must be an algorithm that determines how much am I going to receive with my USDC or USDT for Ethereum. So in that case, we have the AMM dictating, hey, based on the liquidity pool that we have right here, this is the amount that you are going to receive. You see where I'm going? So when we build that interface, we are effectively talking to liquidity pools. So we are exchanging the information that we need in order to tell the end user, uh, yeah, I can offer you this much, okay? So that is basically what happens on the back. How do we do that interaction? How do we allow this commercial transaction to happen with smart contracts? Again, the power of blockchain is with smart contracts. That is how we can make that a reality. So we have liquidity pools, right? With each liquidity pool, we need to make sure that in order for a token to be created successfully in a decentralized exchange, we have liquidity pools, okay? That is what determines the value of that token. And you're wondering, I am going to launch my own ICO. I am going to build my own cryptocurrency and I am going to use that to fund my project that is called the ICO, Initial Coin Offering, okay? In order for us to provide, we need to have liquidity. With liquidity, we can then dictate how much is that token worth. It's all a matter of offer and demand. How many tokens do we have available for sale will determine the price. How much demand of also determine the price. If I have not too much demands, but I have a lot of supply, you know what happens. The value of that token is not that much. However, if I have a lot of demand, but low supply, Mm, that's where we want to be. That is determined by the amount of transactions that we have on the blockchain and the liquidity, okay? So it's very important to understand liquidity pools because liquidity pools will fuel the engine in DeFi, okay? So when we build a decentralized exchange, we are going to roll out a swap interface. A swap interface will allow any of your DeFi exchange users to trade tokens in a quote limit order fashion, very similar to centralized exchange. We use swap interfaces to provide the end user the capability of trading that token, that cryptocurrency, for another cryptocurrency at market value. In centralized exchanges, the market value is determined by the current price that the exchange is willing to pay for that token, which means that it's been dictated by the demand of the token, as well as the order books, like how many orders do we have, which prices are the average prices that that token is being traded at, that will determine the market value. In the DeFi, however, and in decentralized exchanges, it's a little bit different. We talked about AMM, Automated Market Maker. With that, the market value of a token is determined by the liquidity pool. If there's a lot of liquidity for a particular token, then we looked upon the circulating supply and we, and we calculate and we say, well, yeah, the token has X amount in circulation. This is the liquidity that I'm holding on that token. Then you do the, the math and then it dictates how much is that token worth. And the liquidity pool is basically a pair of tokens deposit onto a vault or a DeFi staking pool, right? That will tell, I have this much in exchange for your token, okay? So with that said, it is extremely, extremely important to maintain liquidity because if someone wants to trade that token, for another token and you don't have liquidity in, in your pool, the token, it's not worth. There's no value for the token because I have nothing in collateral to back the value of that token. And also I cannot trade that token. So it's very important to understand liquidity because liquidity will tell that the token has the capability of being traded because I have a collateral that I can use to trade against, okay? 
when token loses its value, it's when, when a lot of users that are holding those tokens decide to sell those tokens and there's no one to buy those tokens. Then the price will drop because again, there's no that much of the demand, which means that the price will go down, right? Very important in DeFi swaps. There is something called the routing and swapping. The routing and swapping, what is that? This is how my DeFi swap interface is going to find those liquidity pools and process that transaction, that swap. How does it know that? It's determined by a contract that is going to provide the pairs on that liquidity pool. Every liquidity pool is going to have a pair. It's going to have two tokens that are going to be allowed to be traded for, right? So we find that. How do we find that with routing? One of them being the single route. The single route is when we are going just to provide you the liquidity pool that we have available in our DeFi exchange to trade that token. And that's how it all started. It started with a single pool for a particular cryptocurrency, right? And then that's how we traded and provided the exchange or the swapping on the interface. However, we also have auto routing. So auto routing, it works on Uniswap, but then other exchanges are also implementing, which basically allows to split a single transaction or a single logical transaction. So let's say I have this token and I want to exchange for this token, right? How much are you willing to give me for that transaction? What's going to happen on the back with auto routing is that I am going to find not just one liquidity pool, the first one that I, you know, that I can see. No, I am going to look against all available liquidity pools for that token to token exchange and I'm going to either split the transaction in multiple. So let's say I have a, a hundred tokens that I want to exchange. I am going to split that in 50-50. I'm just giving you an example. I split that in 50. And then I'm going to tell, hey, liquidity pool one is willing to give me for those 50 tokens X amount. Liquidity pool number two is going to give me this amount. That's how we make the transaction efficient. We now can provide better price for that swapping transaction because now I am using multiple routes to get the best price action, right? I have, you know, multiple paths or in this case, multiple liquidity pools that I can interact and I can split the transaction in smaller transactions to give you the final swap amount. But then I am leveraging that capability to give you the best price. Okay, that is very important to understand, and we are all going to be working with routing in DeFi swap interfaces. But there is something else that is even more cooler than auto routing. If we implement 0x protocol, we can do the same thing, but now we're routing through different exchanges, not only liquidity pools, so we are liquidity pool auto routing, and then we are also going to route two different DeFi exchanges. So now I'm expanding the possibilities of getting an even better price by using a single API interface to give us not only the best out of route for a single DeFi, but for a group of DeFi's. Mm. That's why I called Zero X Protocol DeFi on steroids. It basically gives me the flexibility of expanding myself and going and finding the best price across multiple DeFi exchanges. You see the potential here. So we have the DeFi swap interface. The interface, how it's configured. We set the source, the from token. We determine what token is the end user looking to exchange and to the destination token, which in this case will be the token that he wants or she wants to wants to swap, wants to exchange. And by applying 0x protocol on top of that, we can then go beyond a single DeFi protocol, DeFi exchange. We can look not just Uniswap, we can go SushiSwap, any DeFi exchange that is running in the same EVM, in the same protocol. In this case, if you're going through Ethereum, it's going to be Uniswap. 
if you are, you know, Uniswap, SushiSwap, multiple DeFi protocols that are allowing you to do the swap. So multi multiple DeFi exchanges. I can use 0x protocol to give me not the best price on a particular DeFi exchange, but across the entire ecosystem. Mm, that's amazing. Not only that, but I also splitting transactions between different DeFi exchanges. And this is why I want to talk about the logic behind a DeFi interface. There's one more thing, but I'm just going to talk briefly about this because we're focusing on the interface. There is one particular item that we are also going to be touching, which is going to be the farming and staking and DeFi, which it's what powers the liquidity pool. Okay. So we are incentivizing users to stake their tokens on a farming pool, right? And provide liquidity. So then the token can be traded. In exchange, we will give the staker a liquidity pool token as a reward. So per transaction that gets executed using the DeFi platform, the staker will earn a percentage of the transaction that gets executed, which is a very awesome. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it up now. I know that this is going to be an amazing, amazing journey. We are going to be building our own DeFi swap interface, and we will be using 0x protocol on the back to allow us to get the best price possible for our swapping transaction. All right. So that's it for this video. Short and straight to the point. <laughs> if you like my content, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to. Hey, get ready. We're working on DeFi. See you on the next video. Bye.